so in this class, we're going to see how to reconstruct a function from its derivative. So we're also going to explore the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. All right, how do we reconstruct the value of a function from its derivative? So we're going to let f of t represent the value of a stock market investment t months after January this year. So the original function f is the value of the stock as a function of time. So then f prime of t represents the rate of change of the value of the investment. How would, what would the units be in the rate of change of the value? Um, close, dollars per month, because we're measuring time in months. It's measured in dollars per month. All right, so let's quickly fill in this table, assuming that f of zero is 100. So we're going to assume that the value of our investment at time zero was $100. So I have this graph of f prime, dollars per month. Dollars per month. So I need to figure out between month zero and month one, right? What does that tell me about the value of my investment? It went up by $20. This is not a graph of the value of the investment itself. This is a graph of the rate of change. This is how the value is changing. This says over the first month, the investment changed by $20 per month. So if we think about the area of this rectangle right here, the width here is one month. The height is $20 per month, right? So the area of that thing, $20 per month times one month, gives a value of $20, right? The months cancel, you get $20. That is the change in value of your investment. So your investment changed by a value of $20. So what is my value at one month? 120. $120. All right, let's look at the next month. Okay, between month one and month two here, one month passed, how much did the investment change by? $20, same thing that happened the previous month. We look at the area right here, and the area of that thing, the area under the curve is one month times $20 per month, and then the months cancel, and you just get $20. So, the so we changed um, by $20, we started at $120, the investment changed by value of $20, so we end up at $140. All right. Look at what happened between month two and month three. Month two and month three. What is the area under the curve there? 15, yeah. Because this little chunk here is 10, right? One by 10. And then this is a triangle, which is 1 half of 1 by 10, so it's 5. So this area is positive $15. So if we started at 140, the area under the curve tells me that my investment changed by a value of $15. So I'm now at 155. All right, between month 3 and month 4, how did my investment change? Up by five dollars. So now I'm at 160. All right, month four to month five, what happened to my investment? Decreased by 10. Yeah, because this is a triangle, so to find the area of that, it would be one by 10 times a half, because it's a triangle. So it went down by 10. How do you know that it went down? It's below the x-axis, right? So this says that um, the value of my investment was decreasing because the derivative is negative. Derivative is negative. This area is under the x-axis, so it's negative. So my value decreases by 10. I'm at 150 now. All right, between 5 and 6, 
what is this area? Thirty. So yeah, this rectangle here is twenty, and then this triangle is an additional ten. So the total area there would be thirty. So that's a, another loss of thirty. So this goes down to one twenty. And then in my last month, month six to month seven, big loss. The area of that rectangle is forty. 120 minus 40 is $80. Okay, so as we've just seen, the area between the derivative and the t-axis represents the change in value of the investment. Just like when the derivative was representing velocity, the area under the curve represented the change in distance that works with any rate of change represents the change in value of the investment over the course of the seven months. So we can represent the area with a definite integral, the integral from 0 to 7 of f prime of t dt. That tells you the area under the curve. It counts stuff below the t-axis as negative, which we did because that represented a loss. We could also represent the change in value of the investment over the course of seven months by just taking the value at 7 and the value at 0 and subtracting. That would tell you how much your investment changed over those 7 months, right? So putting those two things together, the integral from 0 to 7 of f prime of t dt is the same thing, it's just a, another way of calculating f of 7 minus f of 0. The total change in the investment over 7 months. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus, part 1 says that if f prime is continuous on an interval from a to b, then the integral from a to b of f prime of t, f prime of t dt is equal to f of b minus f of a. So being that we call it the fundamental theorem of calculus, it's really important. There are also fundamental theorems of arithmetic and algebra. Do you guys know what they are? No, that is fundamental, but it is not the fundamental theorem. I will. Sure. F of 7 minus F of 0. In our example, negative 20. So that's saying that we lost $20 over the course of seven months of investing. So my integral from 0 to 7 of f prime of t dt is equal to f of 7 minus f of 0, which is 80 minus 100, negative 20. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is two different ways of calculating the total change in our investment. This represents a $20 loss over seven months, total change in the investment. So the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, you probably all know it and just have never heard it called that by that name. It says that any number can be written as a unique product of primes. Every number has a unique prime factorization. Sure, like at some point in your life you made a factor tree. That's the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. The fundamental theorem of algebra is similar. It says that any polynomial can be factored into um, a unique product of linear factors. You did that in college algebra. I know some of you did. <laughs> um, and then this one is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, <clears throat> so important fact, the units on the integral from f prime of t dt are the product of the t units and the f prime units. Because remember, we're calculating this integral by taking an area under the curve, and f prime of t, that represents the height of a rectangle, so its units, and then dt, that represents the width of your rectangle, so if you take the f prime units times the t units and multiply them, you get the units of the area of that rectangle. So the integral um, has units, t units times f prime units.
All right, so let's look at another example. The rate of flow of oil through a pipe. So this is telling us how fast the oil is flowing through the pipe, right? Not how much, but how fast. Is given by F prime of T. So I'm using the prime to represent that this is a speed, not an amount. T times 2 plus sine T over 3 plus T gallons per minute at time T. So you plug in a time, and it tells you how fast in gallons per minute. So we're going to use technology, we use our graphing calculator, to find the amount of oil that has passed through the pipe in the first 20 minutes. So if you have a rate of change, the total amount of change can be calculated using an integral. So I could do an integral from 0 to 20 of f prime of t dt. Right, because my F prime units, right, F prime is measured in gallons per minute. And my DT units, my time units, is measured in minutes. So when you do F prime of T DT, gallons per minute times minutes gives you gallons, right? Okay, so this is going to tell me my exact amount of change in the oil that has passed through the pipe, how much oil has passed through the pipe measured in gallons. So if I, if I happened to know um, a formula for F, I could do F of 20 minus F of 0, right? That would also tell me how much oil has passed through the pipe over 20 minutes. I could try to find, I could try to come up with some function F whose derivative is this, but this is pretty complicated. Um, it is possible, but there's some some techniques that aren't necessarily intuitive. Yeah, right. So rather than come up with an antiderivative, we could have our calculator estimate the area under the curve. Right? So we'll just have it calculate the integral from 0 to 20. So if you remember from last class, there's two ways to do this. You can graph it, and it'll tell you the area, um, or you can do it all on the home screen. I like to do the graphing one because it reminds me what the integral represents being the area under the curve. So I'll do that one. So x times 2 plus sine x divided by 3 plus x. Um, and then I got to choose a window, and I'm interested in the first 20 minutes, so maybe I'll go like 0 to 25, just so I can see a little bit more. And then I really have no idea how many gallons are going to have passed through, right, or what the rate is. If I plug a 0 into F prime, what would I get? I get 0 on top. I get 0, right? So that's going to be the slowest the oil can go through the pipe. I don't know. <clears throat> Sine of t can't be any bigger than 1. So my numerator, well, I don't know, 20 over, I have no idea. We'll just do 10. It's always a good first guess. And then graph and see if I can see it. Oh, i got to make sure I'm in radians. Thank you. I am. Um, if you are ever going to be using a derivative with trig functions, you have to be in radians because the derivative rules that we use, that, like the derivative of sine is cosine, that's only true if you're in radians. It's a different formula if you're in degrees. Then turn it to radians. Okay, so that's good. I can see most of my graph. 10 was a little higher than I needed to go. Maybe I'll just go to like 5. Or why? All right, so I'm interested in the area under this curve from 0 to 20, first 20 minutes. So that's in the calculate menu, second trace. And number 7 is integral. And you ask, it asks for a lower limit, 0, upper limit, 20 and it will shade the area under the curve and calculate how much area there is. Because that's the area under a rate of change, 
it represents total change of the original function, not the derivative, but total change in f. So that is 27.55 gallons. Small pipe, yep. 